Well, hello and welcome back to another episode. It's great to see you all. I hope you're doing well. So today we're continuing with our series on writing a ray tracer in C++ using as far as possible only the standard libraries along with the SDL2 library so that we can display results in a window. Now, this is the 20th episode in the series now, so I thought maybe it'd be interesting to do something a little bit different. So I wanted to make a video just taking a quick look back at sort of where we've come in terms of the ray tracer and where it's going. And as, as you saw, the title of this video was developing or building a useful ray tracer. And so I thought it would be interesting to talk about that a little bit. Before I jump into that, I just want to say, as I always do, that if you like this video, please do remember to hit that like button. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm. And if you haven't done so already, please do consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't have to miss any future videos. Thank you very much. Right, well, let's jump into it, shall we? So I began this project probably, I mean, it's been about a year that I've actually been making the videos on this particular series, but in reality, this series on creating a ray tracer for me began before that when I started developing my own linear algebra library. And that series is also available on the YouTube channel if you want to go and have a look at that. And that's just really part of, of who I am and how I like to work. I really just like to do things as far as possible from first principles. So I began with putting together the linear algebra library and then I built from there and we've gradually built up the complexity of the ray tracer over the last 20 episodes of that series. And I think what I'm tentatively calling a QB ray is already starting to be really quite interesting, as you can see in some of the demonstration animations and things going on behind me. So one of the things I've been doing recently is quite a lot of refactoring of the code. And something that came out of that was the sense that I really needed some kind of standard test image that demonstrated or tested all of the features of QB Ray so that I could use that to see if I'd broken anything as I'm refactoring the code. So I put together the image that you can see here, and this tests all of the features and it's, we can animate around it. We see that we have uh, standard primitive shapes, but we can apply non-uniform scaling to those to create interesting shapes such as this squished sphere that you see here. Uh, we also have the sphere here in the background demonstrating spherical projection UV mapping of both the image-based texture map and normal map. Moving on, we have cube-based uh, or you know, box uh, UV projection demonstrating again image and normal mapping uh, applied to the box there. And we also have cylindrical uh, projection or UV projection again showing the same normal map and texture as applied to the box. And then we can do a cone primitive shape here again showing a normal map and an image map applied to that using cylindrical projection. And then of course we have uh, refraction. We've seen reflection on all of those objects and we can do refractive objects as you see here with the disk and the sphere. And finally to include the ray marching capabilities that I built into QB Ray that we've included as we've been going along, I've also used it to create the QB logo which I'm now using incidentally as the channel logo for uh, this channel. We've also created code to do some fairly interesting material effects. If we look at this example here we can see that this cube has a material on it that approximates wood with some fine intricate carved details. Um, I think actually it's really quite interesting. This is entirely procedurally generated um, and should be, I th yes, doable with all of the code that is available on the GitHub repository, but I will talk more specifically in a later video about actually creating uh, this kind of effect. And we can show it off a bit. We can orbit a light source around it, as you can see here, which I think looks kind of cool. Or if we really want to show off, we can even put two light sources. Here we are in red and green going in opposite directions, which is pretty funky, I think. <laughs> and I think that really sort of shows off that Although we're only doing very simple ray tracing, as I say, we're not doing path tracing or anything yet. This is only the basic ray tracing. It's already enough to really create some rather cool and fancy illustrations. Now, there's some things going on with these orbiting lights, which I haven't talked about. These are volumetric lights. Uh, they actually contain a cluster of point lights within them, uh, which is what creates this sort of vague soft shadow effect that's going on. And again, that's another thing that I would like to talk about in a later video. So there we go. That demonstrates really all of the capabilities of the ray tracer so far. Most of those are available in the uh, code that's up on the GitHub repository. Some of those are from my private version of QB Ray, which is substantially more developed than the version that I've actually put up online so far. 
And I'm, my, that will always be the case. It will always be several episodes ahead. I think that's just, a, <laughs> you know, for me, I find that just a really good way of working. So I mentioned at the beginning that I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, my thoughts on writing a useful ray tracer. And it seems, I mean, everyone seems to want to write a ray tracer these days. And there's some great books out there uh, describing ways of doing that and lots of other YouTube tutorials and everything. And that's fantastic. I really like that uh, ray tracing as a topic is something that seems to be getting so many people into programming. And that's I think that's really cool. Um, however, I'm not interested in simply knocking together some code to render an image of a couple of, you know, a few or maybe half a dozen shiny spheres on a plane. That to me isn't really very interesting. And it, it is quite exciting if you're just getting into ray tracing, nothing wrong with it, but it's not what I want. Um, a long time ago, when I first started doing the linear algebra series, I used Blender to create the illustrations uh, for the various mathematical concepts and things that were going on um, with that. And Blender is fantastic, a really excellent tool. I do continue to use it quite a lot, <laughs> uh, nothing wrong with it, but I found it very difficult with Blender to get exactly the kind of effects that I wanted, and in particular, to get the kind of precision that I wanted for demonstrating the mathematical principles. And what I wanted really was a tool that would allow me to combine the maths and the uh, ray tracing together into one tool to essentially really just integrate all that together. And yes, I know you can do Python scripting in Blender and that's very powerful. I've done a couple of videos on that, or at least one um, in the past. And yeah, that's very good. And, you know, I experimented with creating Python code using NumPy to do the maths and then exporting the numbers to a CSV file and then importing those into a Python script in Blender and using that to create the animation. And yes, it works, but it, to me, just felt very fiddly. And that was really the motivation to go and create my own tool, my own tool that would allow me to do exactly what I wanted to do. And that was the, the, the genesis, if you like, of the QB Ray project, as it's tentatively called now. And on that basis, I mean, that sort of informs where we've come so far. And I think says a lot about where really I want the project to go, because I'm developing this as a tool that I want to use. And that very much informs the kind of things that I'm doing. So right now, the focus is very much on ray tracing, not path tracing or any of these other things. And actually, that brings me on to a point that I notice a lot of people use the terms ray tracing and path tracing interchangeably. In my humble opinion, uh, they are not the same thing. Ray tracing refers to the technique of firing a ray from the camera into the scene, detecting when it intersects with an object and then firing a ray from that object to all the light sources just for the direct illumination and that is it. Path tracing is of course the technique of tracing the path that um, virtual photons if you like would take either from the camera or from the light source as they bounce all around the scene and you follow that including um, uh, bouncing off other surfaces in order to create uh, an approximation of indirect illumination. And to my mind, that is what path tracing is. Ray tracing is simpler. So both ray tracing and path tracing, they are different ways of approximating the rendering equation, right? That's really what we're trying to do. All of these really are just, they, they're, they're all techniques that approximate light transport modeling, different ways of creating, different ways of approximating how light would travel around the scene. Now, of course, if you're going to do this properly, you would construct a finite element mesh and then you would solve the uh, Maxwell's equations for that mesh. But of course, for any kind of um, realistic scene of any kind of realistic size, that's physically impossible. I really don't believe there's any hardware on Earth right now that would be able to do that for any kind of substantial scene. So that's really out. So what we have to do is other ways of approximating everything. And then so we have ray tracing is perhaps the simplest approach. And then there's path tracing, which has become very popular now because, of course, intuitively it's very simple and it's very easy to do a very naive implementation of path tracing. It gets more difficult if you kind of want to make it go faster. Um, and then there's other techniques as well, uh, such as photon mapping, which is my personal favorite. And, and for me, I've always found photon mapping a much more compelling approach than path tracing. And so this is where I want to go with the ray tracing series. So we're focusing on all the basics of ray tracing right now, and there's a little bit more to do there. And then I want to look briefly at path tracing 
just a very naive implementation of path tracing. We will look at that at some point in the future. And then I want to look at photon mapping, because as I say, for me, it's a much more compelling technique. It is a biased technique, whereas path tracing is unbiased. I'll explain more about what that means in a later video. Um, but I think for making simple animations and things like I want to do, photon mapping is actually a much more compelling approach because whereas path tracing suffers from the problem of high frequency noise, um, particularly in poorly illuminated areas, which makes animation difficult naturally, then photon mapping results in blurring, which is still not great, but it's a lot better than high frequency noise if you're trying to make animations. So that's sort of my thinking and that's sort of where I'm thinking that I want to go with the rest of this series. So, I mean, the QB Ray, Ray Tracer, as I'm, as I say, tentatively calling it, is already really quite functional. I've used it to create, as you can see here, the logo animation for the channel and indeed the new channel logo. And I also made this rather swishy uh, animation here showing the new QB Ray. It has its own logo for this specific project. And of course, we've seen the demonstration um, image that I created. So I'm aware that there's, uh, you know, quite a few of you that have been diligently following along with this series from the beginning, either as I've been making the videos or people that have come to the channel more recently and have simply gone back to the first episode of this series and been working through it. And thank you so much to you. I really do appreciate that. And I love all of reading all of your comments. So do please get them coming. That really helps with the motivation. And uh, yeah, you know, I just hope that this um, episode will demonstrate that we've got a, a lot more to come and a lot more really interesting stuff. If you're new to the channel and this is the first video in this ray tracing series that you've seen, well, you know, welcome. I hope what I'm saying sounds of interest and might motivate you to go back and have a look at the uh, ray tracing series up to now. So I'll put a link in the description below to the playlist for the whole series so that you can do that if you want or if you just want to subscribe and follow along with the future videos coming up uh, hopefully I've done a reasonable job of making those sound interesting so if you want to do that then you're very welcome. So anyway, I think that's probably enough from me for today. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I really hope that if, you know, that uh, either you feel motivated to go back and look at the ray tracing series so far, or you feel that you want to subscribe to see the videos that are coming up. Um, or if you're someone that's already subscribed and following along, I hope you feel enthused and excited about the content that we have coming up in the ray tracing series. Um, yeah, and I really hope you've enjoyed this video, which has been a great deal of fun making and particularly making the animations that you've seen going on behind me, all done using QB Ray, incidentally. Um, so that's been good uh, fun, <laughs> been good fun for me to explore its capabilities. And uh, yes, anyway, I really do hope that will be of interest. And just finally, just want to say, as I always do, that if you like this video, please do remember to hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't have to miss any future videos. Thank you very much. Anyway, that's enough from me. I really look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye.